Hey everybody, <clears throat> this is Perch. Oh, that was a that was a rough opening there. All right, one last question before I go. Why not? Uh, this is 2023, by the way. This uh, I know I have videos uploaded through most of January at this point. So, um, hey, welcome from last year. Anyway, hi Perch. Hope all is well for you and your family. They had me laughing with the review of the marbles. Your daughter loves the frozen grapes. Wait till she tries bite-sized frozen chocolate covered strawberries or bananas. We sell bags of them. Sam's are great. They, uh, the, you know, the younger daughter who's into the grapes uh, does not like chocolate. It's it's very weird. I don't know. Anyway, uh, back to me. It says, comic shop seems to come roughly three varieties. One, dirty, dusty, run, disorganized dumps with piles of product everywhere, covering the comics and proprietors complaining that comics just don't sell. Those seem to be disappearing, by the way. There's fewer and fewer of those. Number two, small fanboy zones only stocked with whatever the big two are hawking and nothing else. Number three, somewhat roomy, well-lit, clean, and well-organized endeavors stocked with comics, toys, games, statues, and all manners of collectibles. I think we're seeing more and more of that number three, but uh, the difference I would have is it's not well-stocked with comics. The comic shelf is smallest of everything. It's got games, it's got uh, squash millows, stuffies, uh, different type of you know toys and collectibles. It's becoming more of a pop culture store. When people who are um, creators and other people who are in comics say comics are changing, um, I think of these stores and I think of how the comic sh shops are adapting to survive. And I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say comics are changing and the change is no comics. Like comics are changing and we're largely getting rid of the comics and we're replacing with tabletop games and Funko. Is that is that the change? Because that's a weird change. I, I don't think that's the the change that uh, you want, but uh, hey, I may be crazy. Anyway, I've tried polls at many shops. Often there will be independent titles that seem to be really popular, and the store will sell out of every copy they order, even to the point where they cannot fulfill the poll requests. Yet they never seem to set uh, up set. Wait, they never seem to up the order to stock more on the shelves. That's just comic shops being cautious. I mean, there's been too many shops burned by you order high on a title and discover it was just a momentary blip in the sales and then things tank and you're stuck with with a lot um i can always find the latest issue of batman or spider-man uh well and the reason being those are the top sellers at marvel they're safe sellers those also if they do not sell out the uh, you know in the, the month they come out they have a high higher likelihood of being able to be you know returned later or sorry turned turn later uh, because what will happen is people who are normies will come in they generally will start with titles they know and they'll go into back issues if they're you know if they can't find something new or they'll get a, a short run so batman and spider-man just become easier for shops to to know that it will sell and if it doesn't sell out in month one it will sell out by month three it's just a safer bet um it says yet i will always have a hard time finding the popular independent titles even when i request them to be pulled the longer the independent title runs the, uh the more this seems to occur Getting the final issues of Straight Bullets, for example, is oddly difficult. I mean, the reason behind this is kind of the same thing. A lot of indie titles do um, drop off in terms of popularity, and the comic shop is under ordering. That's just, that's again, that's comic shop protecting themselves, more or less. So there are all kinds of entertaining independent comics, but the shops seem to be steadily keep stocking the same dull crap that uh, sweaty middle aged weirdos will pay extra have slabbed. That is weird behavior. Hands down the dumbest thing to ever blight the comic industry. I hate it too, brother. I, some people love it, but I, the slabbing uh, drives me crazy. Can't argue, though, that there's a business behind it. And never read or enjoy. I almost never see shop owners push or promote independent books. Why do you suppose that is? I remember when Bone was being published, for example, but I never saw the shelf. And if you didn't specifically request it, you would never see it. Yet it still sells to this day. Strange. Is this just another form of gatekeeping perpetuated by the fanboy culture of comics? Thanks for keeping the channel going a little bit longer. Looking forward to hearing about what you plan to do next. Well, be a publisher and, uh, you know, also have titles that nobody will buy. That's uh, that's what I'll do next. Um, anyway, look, I, I mean, a lot of what you're, you're mentioning is true, uh, but it really just comes down to risk assessment, safety. You know, the comic shops have been burned a lot by ordering a bunch of titles. I mean, those have been around forever. Remember the days of ordering hundreds of copies of, of image extreme titles, and then they either never shipped or they come out so late that, you know, they no longer matter at that point. Um, that, that, that's, that's haunts people. It, it haunts a lot of people. And 
you know, that's, that's just kind of where things sit. So, you know, is it fair? No, but it's, you know, and, and on top of that, and this is something that I think, uh, comic shops have to kind of figure out how to reckon with, um, it, it's tough for shops to know how to market titles, especially indie titles successfully. They don't know the book very well. It often requires more of a hook. I mean, with Batman and Spider-Man, again, it, it's easy. You just say it's Batman. That's the, that's the amount of marketing and sales that need to be done. Um, with, you know, an independent title like Stray Bullets, it's, you know, the, the hook is not as simple and you got to get more people involved in, in how you do it. So it's just, it's harder. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just harder. And, you know, I, I, a lot of people just don't. A lot of comic shops, you know, you have a limited amount of time. And so they put that time into kind of the activities that they can kind of wrap their heads around. And uh, unfortunately, um, a lot of really good indie titles suffer in that model. Um, the, you know, the, I don't think if, if the comic shop doesn't know how to promote it or sell it or, you know, get, get kind of and have to do a lot of that work themselves, then, you know, they, they, it, they, they will struggle, you know, as simple as that, they will struggle. Um, if the, you know, if, if the comic shop knows more or less how to promote and, and keep in mind, you've got 600 odd books coming out a year. That's the other problem is even if a comic shop wanted to get more involved in the indie books, they're going to have to learn, you know, 400 or so odd title. And by the way, if you're a shop owner, it kind of is your job. So I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, you know, the poor, poor shop owner doesn't know what to do. And, you know, oh, uh, you know, I mean, it is important that you know your merchandise, you know your stock, you know how to promote it, you know how to sell it, you know what to do. It is important that you you have those things in hand and that you actively push the books. It's it's very important. But if you um, the the it, where's the time? I mean, bluntly, it's a shitty answer, but where's the time? And quite frankly, a comic shop that is running on a super thin margin will ultimately just stock Marvel and DC. And they'll stock, it's not just that they're stocking Marvel and DC, they're also only stocking the stuff that is the big names, Spider-Man, Batman. I mean, you know, they're not going to give a chance to the smaller titles. And, you know, the, lots of people are pissed about that. Fans are pissed about it. The uh, publishers are pissed about it. You'll see people say, you know, there's tons of good indie books out there. Why aren't the comic shops promoting them? They should. Yeah, I, I, yeah, they should. In a perfect world, they should. But when the margin for comics are incredibly thin and there's 600 odd books, and frankly, you know, the other ugly truth is more of the money is coming from tabletop games and other things, the, the comic shop owner is going to go where the cash is. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not a subsidized industry. They're going to go to, you know, what they believe they can, they can move. Full stop. Um, until there is, you know, a better system of marketing, until the titles are better understood, until all those things um, are done, you know, none of this stuff is going to work. So it, it needs, um, it just needs better coordination. It needs better information. If, you know, if you're, if you're a creator or a publisher of a small indie title, you need to put your head more in the mind of the comic shop and think about how you can, you can, you know, promote your book. Like you're, the question you should be asking yourself is if I was standing in a comic shop and was holding this comic that I'm, that I'm making in my hands, how would I sell it to readers? And be very critical. Don't fall in love with your own, you know, stuff. You've got to, you got to be able to be really, really negative in some cases about all the, the ways it won't work. And then come up with a plan of how you solve that. Um, this is, this is basic marketing, but it's, it's an art. It's something that requires a lot of skill. It is, uh, it, it's also something that requires a lot of work. And I think, uh, you know, people will do the, hey, I've got a couple of friends on Twitter who will tell me that this is the best story idea I've ever heard in my life. And they, they don't think about the hook. You know, we did the interview with Cullen Bunn, um, you know, and Heath, and they, they have this new book and it's, you know, a, a nurse, an ER, um, 
and she gets powers kind of in a roguelike fashion. And there's a there's a way you you hook that. We we had the discussion during the interview. Okay, so you play up the fact that this character is a hero, that uh, this this nurse is you know working long hours, maybe over dramatize a little bit. Uh, this person is uh, you know selfless, sacrifice their own life isn't isn't doing super great um, because they're they're you know they're they're looking out for others and this uh, ability that the nurse has to kind of you know feel people's pain, etc. It tortures her further. It's it's made her isolated. She's, uh, you know, she, she's not kind of in touch with the rest of society because of everything that's happened to her. And then she stumbles across this power. Now she's got powers and that gives her even more responsibility, but she's wrestling with the fact that, you know, she's already kind of, you know, burdened by life. So she's a hero, but she's a suffering hero. And now she's got a power that gives her more responsibility, but arguably more suffering in that process. And, you know, you're, you're going to do, you, you got to be, but you got to give that hook really clear to readers. Like, Hey, here's something you're going to read. And it's going to be an exploration of what it means to be a hero and what it means to have, you know, just burdened of responsibility and have to come through anyway and, and, uh, self-sacrifice and everything else. So you got to be able to sell that message. And for all the, uh, kind of, you know, hacky shit that Stan Lee used to do, he was good at selling a message. He was good at kind of zeroing in on the crux of what uh, the the value prop is, and you know, in a in a kind of a shill type way, but it worked for him, and that's that's what is needed. You know, I we need if you're an indie comic creator, you got to be able to nail that. And I just you know, from working in a shop to you know helping shops today and and other things, very few people do that. You have to put real effort. You have to convince people, and you have to pull them in. And that's going to get you the orders because the the retailer knows then how to sell it. They know how to pitch it. You know, again, with Spider-Man, they don't need to know too much. It's Spider-Man. You know, hey, here's Spider-Man. You know Spider-Man. Spider-Man's doing shit. I don't know what he's doing, but it's some, it's some shit. That's that's Spider-Man. That's the all the pitch you need. I, I, there's a lot of better written indie stories out there for sure. But uh, they have to work to get that reputation up, and then life gets easier. But you know that that process is tough. I don't know. It's a tough situation. None of this is fair. It just it is. Anyway, thanks for listening. Okay.